How's it going everyone? This is DJ. The AM4K remote comes with four built-in preset buttons that will launch apps such as YouTube, Netflix, Disney Plus, and Paramount Plus. These shortcut buttons are great if you use all four of those services, but if you don't, then they're just useless. In this video, I will show you how to change the default apps to your favorite apps, so that way you can use them all the time, and also how to eliminate accidental app launches when you try to pick up the remote. So without any further ado, grab your remote and let's get right to it. All right, now in today's video, I'm gonna be using the on and remote over here. It's got four shortcuts over here on the bottom, but this will also work with any other Android Google TV remote, like the Google Streamer has two of them, the Nvidia Shield, even though it's got one over here, the Netflix button. As long as you have a shortcut button on there, this will work with any remote. All right, so let's go to the main screen. All right, now in order to remap these buttons and change the way they function, we're going to need an app that we're going to get it from the Google Play Store. So you can either scroll over to the magnifying glass here and click in here and search for button mapper, or you can use the microphone and just say button mapper over there. So let's do that. Button mapper. And then we just click on install. Now you can open it. Here we're just gonna click OK. We need, this works with accessibility service. So click OK here. Now in here we're gonna scroll down, go to accessibility, go to the right, and scroll all the way to the bottom. All right. In here we're gonna go where it says enable. We're gonna turn that on. Click OK. And that brings you to the main menu of button mapper. Now, in order to program one of the shortcut buttons that we have on the remote, we got to go down where it says add buttons, click on there, scroll down, and we're going to click on where it says add button, click on it. And then in here, you're going to select which button you want to program. So if I do Paramount Plus here, click on it. As you can see, add it over here. Now you can go over here and if you press the wrong button, for example, you can just click on it. It will delete it from there. And then all you gotta do is go back down, select that button, and then do it again. All right, now to configure it, we're, since now this is highlighted, we're gonna click on here. Now this message, don't worry about it, where it says unlock, you don't need to. All you gotta do is click on no thanks. There's some extra features in there, like it says the pro features that we don't wanna use, and we're not gonna use it most likely. Here we're gonna go down where it says customize and we're gonna click on it to enable it. And now we got three options in here, single tab, double tab, or long press. Now, depending on the remote that you're using for the single tap over here, for example, if you have, let's say the Nvidia Shield, because of the shape of the remote, every time you try to grab it, this Netflix button over here, and a lot of people are gonna agree with me, you hit it accidentally. And this could be a pain in the neck when you're sitting there watching a movie and all of a sudden you go to raise the volume, lift up the remote, and you touch Netflix and it switches apps. For that specific reason and that remote, where it says single tap here, we click on it. And go down where it says no action and set it like that. Each time you pick up that remote or you tap it once, it's not going to do anything. So this will be dependent on the remote you have and depending on what you want to do. If you prefer not to have anything for a single tap, you can just set it as no action. Otherwise, you can go back in here and where it says actions, click on it, and then go down where it says applications. Now there's other options in here too. Feel free to explore. We're gonna go with applications. And then in here, you're gonna select an app that you wanna launch as a single tap. And just put downloader here, and that's it. Now. Depends on how many apps you have and how many you want to launch with the same button. You can just do the double tap here and do the same thing. Click on it, select an application. And then it will assign to the double tap now. And the same thing for the long press. All right. Now we go back out here. Now to customize another button, we got to repeat the same process. Just go down where it says add button. And then if you click on it, 
select which button you want to customize. So let's say we're going to do Disney Plus. You click on it. And the same thing. You're just going to go down where it says button 9. Click on it. Select no thanks again. And the same thing. Just click on customize. Enable it. And then select where you want to change here. And that's about it. So we're just going to delete this one. Now I know it's going to be a little tricky once you add, let's say, all four buttons over here. Since all you see is button 9 and button 10, you just got to kind of remember which one is which. And especially when it comes down to deleting it. So just before you delete, double check that that's the one, the correct one. And just click on delete and it's done. Right, so now if we press the home button on the remote. So let's test that button that we just assigned the two apps earlier. So we switch over. And we do the single tap, we're going to get the downloader app over here. And then if we do the double tap, we're going to get Cody. And very simple. And that's it, right? That's pretty convenient. You can launch two apps on the single button over here or change which one these buttons launches. Now, if you notice that when you single tap, double tap or long press, the button that you just assigned different apps on it still launches the default app that that button was assigned to, for example, Paramount Plus. Then to fix that problem, all you got to do is go to your settings. Let me go in here. Go down to apps. And then here we're going to go to the right and find button mapper. Now, this app will also be on your home screen on the bottom on the list with the other apps in there. So you can launch it from there. We're going to go where it says open. And in here, you want to scroll down where it says troubleshooting. Click on there and scroll down where it says alternate button handling. And you want to enable this. This will fix that issue where the default app still launches. That's all you got to do. Just enable the setting that will take care of that problem. And that's about it. All right. So what do you guys think? Is this a, an option that you guys may use? Do you find it helpful? If you use it, what are you going to do? Assign just one app? Are you going to assign different functions to it? I would like to know what you guys do. Leave me a comment in the comment section below. All right, I think that should cover everything. If you guys have any questions, please leave it in the comment section below, and I will answer everybody's question as soon as possible. If you did find this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up. It does let YouTube know you like what I do here, and it does help my channel grow. Thank you for watching. This is DJ. Till next time.